Ah, spit shine. Living proof that all that glitters isn't gold. Well, 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 if it isn't the legendary Luke Worm, do you really think you've caught me? <laughs> I don't see anywhere for you to go now. And soon you won't see anything at all! Surprise glitter! Ah, my eyes! Ah! Who oh, who even does that? Gah! Oh no, Luke! That's his one weakness! Wouldn't that be everyone's weakness? Yeah, I guess. This reminds me of something. Is there anything that doesn't remind you of something? Oh, do I smell an intro? Oh good, here we go. Today's episode deals with infections caused by foreign bodies causing injury to internal organs. As such, if you are sensitive to descriptions of infected wounds and body parts, viewer discretion is advised. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Glitter. It's fun. It's sparkly. It's the crafting world's sweetheart. It's also a life choice that, once made, cannot be unmade. Once you decide to let glitter into your life, you can be certain that it will cling to you and all that you hold dear, especially if anything you hold dear happens to be made of fabric that makes it impossible to get out. And that's probably the best of the downsides that glitter has in store. Because while glitter can provide a quick moment of joy, the fun you have in the time of saying, oh yay, can lead to a lifetime of problems. Oh, but, but how could little bits of pretty glitter cause a problem? Well, for starters, inhaling it probably isn't a good idea. But worse than that, glitter is known to have adverse effects on the environment and can even cause blindness and loss of life. What? No way, how? I'm so happy you asked. A 19-year-old woman was admitted to Swansea Singleton Hospital, suffering from a swollen eye and partial loss of vision. Upon first inspection, doctors found a lesion with a clump of matter. At first, they believed it to be a herpes infection, certainly not something you want to find in your eye. But upon closer inspection, they found something strange. Whatever the clump was, it had a reflective surface. When questioned by her doctors, the woman remembered having come in contact with a glitter-covered Christmas card. Operating, the doctors managed to remove the clump and found it to be the very same glitter. Fortunately for the patient, she was able to be discharged with little more than antibiotic treatment. Also, she got to keep her eye, which is more than I can say about others. In 2016, mother Erica Diaz was cleaning up after a craft she and her daughter were making when a piece of glitter got into her eye. This piece, described as nothing more than a small speck, managed to cut her cornea, only the beginning of a truly hellish experience. The the cut soon became infected, and Diaz found herself subjected to a tormentious process that she documented in a series of galleries on Imager. One of the first images detailing her journey featured her eye, completely red but for a white iris and pupil, described by Diaz's surgeon as a waterfall of pus coming from the back of the eye. A pocket of that pus then exploded and leaked out across Diaz's face, requiring her eye to be coated in antifungals, applied every hour with three oral medications. From there, Diaz had cornea transplant surgery. Unfortunately, the pus in her eye had built to a point that it was pressing against the blood vessels hard enough that the medication was unable to numb the eye, which meant that the pain from the operation caused Diaz to wake up. After a second failed cornea transplant, the doctors found that nothing was going to save the eye. So instead of letting Diaz suffer a death by, in her own words, glitter fungus eating her brain, they removed the eye. In its place, Diaz got a prosthetic, though par for the course, even that was a struggle, and involved her insurance refusing to pay for it. And if getting it in your eye is bad, breathing glitter in can't be very good either, can it? Probably not, no. Absolutely not. Lungs are for air and good vibes only, not little plastic bits. Very good, boys. Argentina, 2014. Seven-year-old Mauro Lopez Banegas had celebrated his birthday and had been gifted a brand new whistle. The young boy had excitedly started playing with it as soon as he had gotten home and, moreover, found that he could make it blow sparkles if he put glitter in before blowing in it. And then he accidentally inhaled instead of exhaling. 
sucked down a lungful of the glitter and immediately started coughing. Banega's mother, Berta, took him to the hospital where, quote, they gave him some medication that seemed to soothe things down, but the next day he was worse and was taken to hospital again where, despite the care of doctors, it had gone downhill. Doctors found that the particular brand of glitter that Morrow had inhaled contained zinc and copper, which in this case proved to be toxic and blocked the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen in his lungs, which is kind of an important function of the lungs. Morrow proceeded to fall into a coma and, tragically, passed away after fighting for his life for two weeks. But wait, why was there metal and glitter? Well, to make it shine. Many kinds of glitter contain some form of metal, much of it aluminum. In this case, the kind inhaled just happened to contain a much more destructive kind of metal. So what should we do when it comes to this sparkly stuff? Well, Diaz has some words of advice when dealing with glitter in the future. Do I think glitter should be banned? No. Just wear goggles and gloves when using it to protect your eyes, and keep it from getting stuck under your nails where you risk rubbing it into your eyes accidentally. F glitter bombs, though. Which is a sentiment that seems to be shared amongst many who have been at the receiving end of glitter bombs, even without the whole blinding thing. After all, once glitter becomes litter, it tends to be nigh impossible to get rid of. <laughs> In fact, this infuriating quality of glitter has been capitalized by brands with the intent of explicitly pissing people off. Okay, I just want it on record that if any friends send me glitter without warning, we ain't gonna be friends anymore. But then if you do that, then they'll just send you glitter again, and, and the glitter cycle will never end. Others, like YouTuber and Brew Crew favorite Mark Rober, use it to actively punish wrongdoers. Rober released three videos in which he custom-built a device to track porch pirates, with a motorized cup that sprayed glitter out when it was opened, and a canister of fart spray to make it smell horrifying. Thankfully for the porch pirates, and for Rober's legal fees, the glitter sprayed out at the sides, not up, and didn't get into people's faces or eyes. Had it, knowing the American legal system, Rober may have been held liable. Instead, his contraptions just made a mess around wherever they were opened and stunk up the place. Now, yes, we should take a moment here and address something. A couple of the clips that Rober showed included two reactions that were faked by acquaintances of one of the people helping create the video, as Rober stated on his Twitter. And as he also stated, those clips have been removed from the video. But that glitter? That is 100% a real mess that someone had to clean up. Glitter bombing was used as a form of political protest before gay marriage was legalized. Much like slapping a pie in a politician's face, though with concerns over the potential for eye injury. Oh, and if life-threatening injuries wasn't enough, glitter is also bad for the environment. More often than not, glitter is made of plastic and is small enough that it belongs to a problematic category known as microplastics. Once out in the wild, microplastics like glitter can be consumed by plankton and fish. Once enough microplastics are in an animal's system, they can die from starvation. They can even make their way into humans who consume them, as a study in 2018 discovered. Tresia Farrelly, an environmental anthropologist, found that the plastic that most glitter is made from can be particularly troublesome when it breaks down, as it releases chemicals that interfere with animal hormones. And, you know, humans are a kind of animal. Those environmental concerns have seen some effect. The Richmond Art Center in British Columbia banned glitter back in 2019. And in the UK, major retailers Morrison's, Waitrose, and John Lewis have all declared that their 2020 Christmas products will be glitter-free. Oh, and Mark Rober's second and third glitter spewing decoy packages? They used biodegradable glitter this time. At the end of the day, it's important to make sure we're not putting inedible things inside of us. Just like you wouldn't want to inhale sawdust at a workshop or get splinters in your eyes, you don't want to get glitter in there either, no matter how pretty it looks. There are kinds of glitter that are marked as being eye safe that are specifically used in makeup like eyeshadow. Though the American Academy of Ophthalmology warns to be careful of glitter or metallic makeup, stating that flakes can fall into the eye, get into the tear film, and irritate your eyes. Glitter eye makeup is a common cause of corneal irritation or infection, especially for people who wear contact lenses. Larger glitter or inclusions in makeup can scratch the eye, much like getting sand or dirt in your eye. Craft glitter should generally be kept away from the eyes, as while it may be a shinier, brighter, and cheaper alternative, the risk far outweighs the reward. And just like you wouldn't, or rather I should say shouldn't, aim a Nerf gun at a friend's face, you also really shouldn't glitter bomb anyone either, since they're often shipped in the mail without printed warnings.
unless you want to blind them, and even then I still wouldn't recommend it. And if you want to find a festive or fun craft to do, consider using biodegradable glitter, or just forgo the shiny stuff altogether and do something safe, like making a gingerbread house, homemade putty, or making s'mores to snack on while watching your show. Luke, you can't go back out there! You could have gone blind! You could have died! I don't have a choice! This city needs me. But what if you meet Spitshine again? Well, I guess you could say it'll just be my time to shine. I bet they're gonna save the last fight between Spitshine and Luke for their special holiday episode. Oh, speaking of which, we have one of those. Check out On the Hill for some secret Santa shenanigans. Happy holidays, folks.